Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to the Sidereal Vedic Astrology Outlook for the month of October. Now this October we have got a big month astrologically. It's big because Jupiter will retrograde so we've got the planet that's all about big things and expansion. It's going to go retrograde here in October. We've also got two eclipses. There is a lot going on. So if you would like to join me in the introduction today, we are going to cover an overview for October. We're also going to take a look at the American election. I also want to welcome all the new subscribers. Thank you so much for joining. And a couple of you have asked in the comments, where is pick a card? You're like, hey, are you not doing pick a card anymore? I am doing pick a card, guys. You can come on over to Patreon. You can sign up for a free account and you will get free pick a card there on Patreon. So come along and join the fun. That's what's happening there. Also, if you go on Patreon, you'll see that I am teaching Vedic Astrology and I've also got a book club as well. We are currently going through Anatomy of the Spirit by Caroline Mace, a really wonderful book where we're going to learn all about intuition and very interesting topics like that. So you can come along and join that if, if you'd like to. Now we'll take a look at the energy for October 2024. As I said, it's a big month. We've got a lot going on. So I'll just cover in brief some of the things that I see here. At the start of October, we have an eclipse occurring on the 2nd of October. We have another big eclipse on the 17th of October. Mars will be aspecting into these two eclipses. So the energy could be intense at this time. These are dates where you will want to take care around these times. I am recording this on the 18th of September. Today is an eclipse day as well and there has been some upheaval in the news. Uh, I do catch up with news a little bit here and there. I, I check out the headlines. Like some of you, I also don't watch too much news, but some of you have indicated actually in the comments that you like watching the introduction to these videos because you're not watching any news at all. And I completely understand that. And that what you're doing is in service to the whole planet. Thank you to those of you in my comments who have said, you know, I'll happily get my news from an astrology channel or a spiritual channel or something like that but you're like you're not going to go on those big news channels well done you you know you are maintaining peace on the planet you're being a frequency holder there's a huge service in not watching news so i actually do go and have a look at news because some of you have mentioned that you do get news from this channel. So because you've said that, I, I will venture out there and take a look uh, and, and talk about things on your behalf. So I do hope what I'm doing here is helpful. Um, but let's get back to the energy for October. I just wanted to thank those viewers who've left comments saying that they appreciate the intros to these videos. Um, so yeah, eclipses, 2nd of October, eclipse on the 17th of October, today on the 18th. Yes, as I said, I did have a look at some news headlines. I did see that there is a bit of chaos and upheaval in the world today. So eclipses are pretty intense at the moment. We've all got to take care on these dates. So October, 2nd October, 17th October, let's take care on those dates. Jupiter is going to go retrograde from the 9th of October to the 4th of Feb 2025. Okay, so this is a big long retrograde. Jupiter will cover the exact same ground that Jupiter has already covered from 15 July to 9 October. Now the astrologers in my audience will totally understand what I have just described there, but there was a commentator who asked me, what do I mean when I say that? Okay, because in the Saturn retrograde video, I had one of you ask the question, hey, when you're saying that Jupiter is going to cover the same ground, what, or Saturn is going to cover the same ground, what are you talking about? So 
let's say we've got the 9th of October here and Jupiter is making his way up to 9th October. Okay, Jupiter's going to retrograde and cover. Now, Jupiter doesn't go backwards in the sky. Okay, a retrograde motion happens because the Earth is moving faster than Jupiter. Okay, so they're all moving forward all the time. But what's happening is let's say Jupiter is approaching the 9th of October and then there's a retrograde. Jupiter is going to cover ground that Jupiter has already traveled over. Okay, and that's the information that I reveal in these reports. So I hope that makes sense. If you want to learn more about retrogrades, we will cover those in my astrology lessons on Patreon. We're not up to that yet, but we will cover that at some point. So you might want to join at that point for that lesson. I'll let you know. Maybe I will let you know when it's done, when that gets done. Uh, but yes, Jupiter will be covering the same ground that Jupiter has already covered, as I say, from 15 July to 9 October. You can think back to, you know, July, August, September. Just sort of think about what were you dealing with? Are there any loose ends? Is there anything that you might need to go back and correct or revisit or deal with again? That is a possibility uh, from, as I say, 9th October to 4th Feb. 2025. Now how am I going to interpret this Jupiter retrograde? What does this mean in world terms? Well this Jupiter retrograde will happen in Taurus and in global terms this can be a review of monetary systems, finances, farming, okay, physical goods, um, a review of energy relating to careers when we look at the aspects of Jupiter, you know, the aspects that Jupiter is going to make, we could be looking at uh, a review of energy relating to careers, to corporations, to leadership, okay? Um, but, you know, that aspect there in, into Virgo, I've got here, you know, even a review of the justice system. That is actually quite interesting because over some years I've been observing since Jupiter was debilitated. I remember at that time when I was doing these reports, this was quite some time ago. Uh, I can actually click back and tell you how long ago this was. So when was Jupiter debilitated? Let's take a look. Jupiter was debilitated. Yeah, we're looking at sort of 2020 here yeah, and 2021. Okay, did we have any justice in the world at that time? No. Um, that was a really tough time. And I was observing that Jupiter was debilitated at that time. And I was saying that as Jupiter will get closer to Cancer, we're going to see our justice system come more online again and be stronger and more able to fight for justice and things like that. I wanted to bring up uh, a particular case that I know has been talked about a lot here in the United Kingdom, and that is the case of Lucy Letby. And those of you in the know, you know that Lucy Letby um, was a nurse and, and patients were dying under her care. Now, I do not know, was she innocent? Was she guilty? I have no clue. I have no clue at all. The only thing I wanted to bring up in regards to this was that a guy called David Davis MP, Member of Parliament, he has come out and said, look, I'm going to investigate this case because there's something not right. And I've been watching his interviews and it's really interesting to hear him speak because he is saying that there's something not quite right in that case. And the first time he appeared on the scene talking about this case was when Saturn went retrograde. And that really interested me because I was like, oh wow, Saturn has just gone retrograde and now this guy has popped up and is saying that we really need to look at that case again. And he's been getting advice and guidance from all over the world actually. He's had people from like the Royal Statistical Society and different experts around the world are popping up and saying there's something not right with that case. Someone needs to look into this. There, there could be a miscarriage of justice. 
Um, there was another miscarriage of justice that was recently identified here in England. And I think, yeah, a guy spent many years uh, in jail and he was totally innocent. So um, that's really interesting that now we're going to have Jupiter go retrograde. So this is from 9th October to 4th Feb 2025. And I think because both of these significant outer planets are retrograde, uh, it's going to lend power to the investigation and to the case and who knows some new information might come out or, or something might happen I'm not 100% sure also my intuition doesn't give me any information about her one way or another I don't have any clue but I remember when the case first came out I did investigate it quite a bit actually just um, on the side I looked at her chart I looked at various things it, it, it kind of captured me a little bit which is unusual I normally don't have any interest in you know I, I don't want to look at look up serial killers and things like that but I, I did actually look that one up because yeah something about it did seem odd to me again I don't know um, what's going on there but I do know that there are two significant planets retrograde and their energy can be useful uh, in some kind of investigation into what's going on there. If we're having a look at October, the rest of the month, we've got Venus in Libra through to the 12th or 13th of October. Venus will then step into Scorpio. Venus in Libra is not the best energy for love life. Uh, Venus in Virgo, Libra, Capricorn or Aquarius, not the best energy for love life. So that's 6, 7, 10, 11. Venus doesn't transit well in these places. So um, I know people would think, well, but Venus in Libra, Venus is in her own sign. Surely that's good. I've read those comments uh, on my videos before. And when we look at the classic texts, Venus doesn't transit well through Libra and I've, I've seen that in, in charts and when I've looked at love lives and I've studied this, yeah, it's, it's true, it doesn't, it doesn't perform so well here. It's great for work. If you want to love your work, if you want to love what you do, you certainly will do that. So it's good energy for work, but it's not the best energy for love life specifically. Uh, Sun is going to enter Libra from 17th October to 15th November and that is really significant okay because that's a debilitated Sun and that's going to be one of the key energies that's in operation across the American election 5th of November okay shall we take a look at the election let's do it how are we doing for time we're okay um, I just want to say before I get into any election stuff I want to thank my audience so much for being a really wonderful audience guys thank you so much we've got a very high vibrational audience here we haven't had any fights break out over politics we haven't had any nastiness we haven't had any of that um, across this year when it comes to talking about elections thank you I just want to thank you for that because it makes it a lot easier. I will do my best uh, on my end to not offend or upset anyone. Um, I will tell you what I see in the stars. I'm just telling you my interpretation and where possible I will tell you my bias. If I have a bias I'll just tell you. Okay, uh, I don't mind doing that and I just want to thank you for being kind in the comments to each other and to me as well. It just makes it all easier sometimes you know if things don't go well I do think to myself oh maybe I should just not not talk about politics I do like to talk about it a little bit you know because I find it interesting and um, yeah I've just been observing you know and for me I'm an outsider uh, I am an Australian I moved here to United Kingdom um, I'm an immigrant actually it's interesting that immigration is such a big thing in America and rightly so I've been an immigrant you know and I, I know that process it took me eight long years and I had to give the United Kingdom government all of my school results and I had to pay thousands of pounds and I had to you know they wanted character references and oh all kinds of things yeah and as I say they wanted my high school results my university results they wanted everything uh, I know what it is to immigrate to another country and to be a legal immigrant, yeah. 
Uh, and I think there should be legal processes uh, in place in, in a country. That's, that's fair enough. And I can see when I look at America, I think America is fighting for that it wants to stay America. You know, I, I get it. So I, I understand what's going on there. And, and I think maybe it's interesting for some of you to hear an outsider's view. Um, so I am an outsider who takes a great interest in America. Um, why is that? Well, in Australia, I grew up watching a lot of American TV and Hollywood films. Um, and yeah, I've got friends and family there. And uh, to me, it's just a fascinating place. So the other thing is the majority of my audience here on YouTube, you're all in America. <laughs> and a big majority of my clients, my client base is, uh, you're all there in America too. So yeah, I'm, I'm wishing you all well is, is what it is. And, and let's take a look. Let, let's take a look and see what the energy is like. So, so the 5th of November, we've got in the sky on the 5th of November, I had a look at the United States chart and what we've got transiting in the sky is a debilitated Mars, we've got a debilitated Sun, we've got Venus and Mercury both hidden in Scorpio, we've got Jupiter and Saturn both in retrograde. Uh, and what I saw yesterday when I was observing this was just energetically, intuitively, I got the vibe of... Um, and the, the word really is, it's what I've got written here, deflated. I got, I, got, I got the feeling of a nation deflated. Okay, and um, yeah, I've got written here, I'm getting a tired and deflated energy from the nation as a whole. I also did something kind of unusual. I drew a couple of cards as well, guys. I just was, I don't know, I was... I was just in detective mode, wasn't I? And I wanted to see, all right, what, what, what do we have here? Can I use the cards to confirm what it is that I'm seeing? Now, let's have a look here. I drew, so on that point that I'm getting a tired and deflated energy, I've got here, I drew the cards, three of swords, four of cups, three of wands. Now, those of you who know tarot, you know that three of swords can be emotional heartbreak or and and it can be a feeling of yeah you're you're tired and deflated you know what what is that feeling of heartbreak it's like well you got nothing left you know there's that kind of feeling four of cups is a, an energy of boredom three of wands i actually quite like that because that is a we're looking out to the horizon and we're looking to the future so that's the kind of energy that I see around the 5th of November and, and when it comes to the election results. I also had a look at the United States chart briefly. United States numerologically is in a number one year. So it is, you know, the country as a whole is ready for a new beginning. Um, the country as well is in the height of Sadi Sati, okay, which is very interesting, right? So that means you're Aquarius moon, aren't you? Let's have a look. Let's bring that up. Yeah, Aquarius Moon, yeah, yeah. Um, and I was having a look at things. I mean, you've got a Pluto natal return within about a two degree orb, okay? So that's chaos and upheaval. And that is what's happening. Um, that has been a huge theme of this election cycle. And that will continue for another couple of years. Definitely next year, numerologically, we've got Mars year, it's a nine year. Next year could be a tough year. We could be closing out some really big cycles. So next year, there's some tough energy. I also drew a couple of cards for the United States chart. I got the strength card and the nine of swords on the bottom of the deck. That was interesting to me. I got the, the strength card is there. This is a strong country that will weather um a lot of stuff and you know i i also got the song pop into my head sometimes very rarely this happens but it happened on this occasion the song was crowded house don't dream it's over and if you look at the lyrics of that song there are some interesting lines where he sings about you know um there is freedom within there is freedom without trying to capture the deluge in a paper cup and then there's some line about they're trying to build a wall between us I thought that was such an interesting line there's also a line about um, 
you know the the news is full of tales of war but you you flip over to the tv page things like that i just thought wow but that don't dream it's over song that came into my mind as well when i was which is rare i don't often get a song come up when i'm looking at a chart sometimes rarely i do those of you who've had a reading with me you know that very rarely but sometimes it does happen a song will actually come in it's very rare it doesn't happen very often it happened on this occasion um so that's what i observe when i look at the united states as a nation as a whole what's going on there uh, and we don't particularly need intuition to tell us that you know people are going to be deflated or whatever we know that we know that one side will be happy or relieved and the other side is going to be feeling oh well you know uh, so that that's 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 there um, but for me to be picking up that feeling of that energy I, I, I get the sense that a lot of people might be feeling that way possibly I don't know um, I also watched uh, I've been watching a lot of different things to do proper research for this episode. Um, well, I don't know if it's a proper research. It's some research. Uh, I watched a guy called Eric Weinstein. He's a lifelong Democrat. And what I found interesting in that talk, I'll put a little screenshot of the uh, link that I watched. I just checked it out today. It had 2 million views. So, wow, a lot of people watched that. And he's a lifelong Democrat. And he said that he doesn't know whether or not these are the two people, Donald Trump, Kamala Harris, he doesn't know if they're the two people that are going to be in the race on election day. So look at that. It's almost like, I mean, we don't have very long to go. We've got, I'm recording this on the 18th of September. I mean, we've got like, what, a month and a half? I mean, that's not a lot of time. But he's almost treating it like that month and a half is like a year and a half and anything could happen and even the candidates could change. So look at that. Like that's one of his predictions. I thought that was an interesting prediction to make. I wanted to have a look astrologically. Could that happen? I mean, it could. Um, when you look at the United States chart, Uranus is kind of returning uh, for the United States chart let's have a look Uranus is significant here I mean Uranus is going to return exactly for the United States let's have a look at this mm, like 2028 or thereabouts yeah 2028 but Uranus is in Taurus and natal Uranus is in Taurus so there is significant change here, and that's Uranus, which is fourth from the moon, fourth from the moon, home country. We can read that, and then Uranus, seventh from ascendant, that is the public. It could be that the public change, um, could it be that the candidates change? I'm not 100% sure. I mean, that could be more tied into Pluto, maybe, the upheaval of Pluto natal return, which is very tight and here uh, 2024 like that Pluto natal return that is that is the planet that I would um, say is causing the upheaval and the chaos and the change more so than Uranus and it's really interesting I did watch RFK Jr. speak about this election here's a guy who knows elections better than anyone I mean his whole ancestral lineage is American elections. I mean, he knows this stuff better than anyone. And he said, this is the wildest election he's ever seen. So yeah, I mean, even he's saying, we don't know what's gonna happen. Uh, we really don't. So I'll, I'll talk through the charts and what I see, but take it all with a pinch of salt, because anything I say here today, it could change on a day by day basis. And everything I'm sharing here is just, well, it's just theories and it's kind of interesting. So I'm happy to share with you what I see uh, because I think I did talk a little bit about Donald Trump's chart when I was looking at him versus Biden and you know, but I didn't really look into it too much. Let's have a closer look. Let's have a closer look at Donald Trump's chart. What I will say here is that right now he isn't running the best energy. Um, he's in a Jupiter Ketu period 
And I think this energy did not help him in the debate that he recently had. Okay, I did watch the debate in full uh, and yeah, I found it interesting. I still wouldn't vote for either candidate. I do have someone I would vote for. I'm going to share her chart with you in a moment, so stay tuned. But uh, I wouldn't vote for either Trump or Kamala Harris. But I have someone I would vote for now. Isn't that interesting? So I will tell you my discovery. But what did I see there with Donald Trump? Okay, oh, the other thing I wanted to ask you, how are we doing on time? Oh my gosh, 26 minutes, it's gone so long. I wanted to say um, the RFK Jr. fans, in my audience. How do you feel about him going to the Republican side? What are your thoughts there? Uh, I would love to know. I would love to hear from you guys. How do you feel about that? Uh, are you still going to vote for him? Does that mean that, okay, you'll, you'll vote now for Trump? What, what are your thoughts there? I'd love to hear um, because, yeah, some of you have shared your thoughts in the comments below. Basically, every time I've talked about RFK Jr. on this channel, I've just seen the most positive comments. Everyone's just like, oh, he's great. And, you know, everyone just happily puts really positive things there for him. And look, I, I, I like him too. Uh, I do. I, I think he's a really good person. I still couldn't vote for him and, and or Trump's side now because I do think that that whole thing will preserve the war machine, if you know what I mean. And that, so that's why, and I'll talk about the, the person that I'm going to talk about soon. Let's, let's get to that chart quickly. But I just thought I'd ask, what, what are your thoughts there? Um, and I think one of you met him and you wrote in the comments and I, I loved reading what you said and it was amazing. So yeah, tell, tell us what you think. Um, because I don't know what to think about that. that. That was a sudden change. That was like, whoa, that's, that's amazing. So anyway, so let's get back to Donald Trump's chart. And yeah, what the energy that I saw during the debate, I mean, he's got Jupiter Ketu running, and that's running until 27 September 2024. What I would say to him is that don't have another debate until your Venus sub-period kicks in. So Jupiter Venus Venus Antardasha will kick in 27 September 2024. It goes until 8 March 2025. I think this is a better energy for him. And I think that, you know, uh, the Dasha is, yeah, more, more positive for him uh, from 27 September 2024. In terms of what's it looking like on election day, can he win this election? Here's what I see. The, the conditions aren't so favorable. It, it, it can go his way. It can. Saturn is fourth from the moon. It's seventh from the ascendant. Fourth from the moon is Saturn Dia period. And I still remember my Saturn Dia period. And when I look back on that two and a half years of my life, what did it yield me? It yielded me some of the absolute best things of my life, but it also yielded me some of the deepest lows I've ever had and it makes it a tricky one to predict and say all right what is this going to be like for him uh, I can see his Jupiter is going to be transiting over natal Rahu oh hang on and then it steps back I see yeah and it goes over his natal uh, Uranus as well. Oh, this is all. This is all very difficult to read. I'm telling. I can't read this. It's like I'm not getting much of a handle on him, and that's why I went for the cards again, and I did with Kamala Harris as well. I drew one card for each. This is fascinating. So let's let's. All right, hold on. Let's let's go back to the astrology. What I can say here is that. Is that it's hard to read I, that is really what i feel he's running so numerologically we have an answer he's oh the camera just cut out I, i'll come back numerologically i'll try and be efficient and quicker because we do have a couple more charts to get through um, numerologically he's running a number one year that we saw with Keir Starmer. i mean that's just put him in power recently it's strong numerologically he's got a strong thing going on here the saturn dire period could yield him uh, something fantastic but it equally in my own personal experience Saturn dire period 
gave me some of my deepest lows as well. Um, so I, I don't know exactly how to how to read that. So he's got, as I say, he's got some good things in here. He's got some challenging things in here. Let's take a look at Kamala Harris. Uh, we've got her chart here. It's so funny when I was watching clips of her speaking and I saw these like video montages where she would say something like, you know, what can be versus unburdened by what has been. When she was doing that whole thing, I was thinking, oh, I could do a Rahu Ketu joke there with that. And then when I opened her chart, um, this was like a few days ago, oh, I had a little bit of a giggle because she's got Rahu in the first house. And I'm like, that's why she's always talking about what can be, you know, she's always, which I quite like. I like that she's future focused. You know, she is future focused. We've got Rahu in the first house. She's all about the future. And I think I actually like that about her. Um, she's running a number two year, which is quite similar. I mean, Trump's running a one year, which is stronger. She's running a two year, which is the moon. Not so great, but she has recently just started a brand new nine year cycle. So she's still fresh into that new year, nine year cycle. So that is strong for her. Uh, when I was looking at her Dasha setup, I was impressed. She's got Rahu, Venus, Sun running right now. So this is until the 1st of October 2024. Then the energy shifts a little bit. So the energy that she'll be running across the election is um, Rahu, Venus, Moon. Moon, again, not so ideal. Uh, oh, I see. That's interesting. That looks like a Parivartana too. Oh, it is indeed. Wow, two Parivartanas. Wow. Yeah, because I was looking at this one here. I mean, this is just quite incredible. What she's got, Rahu, Venus. Uh, okay, so Rahu's active and then Venus is active. Now, because Venus is the Antradasha that's active, it's activated this Parivartana exchange, which is between houses three and five. And if we look at that, that's third house courage, fifth house kingdom. Okay, that's all active right? So the Dasha can yield this to her. I am seeing that. Wow, even this moon period uh, could be strong for her as well. That is interesting because she's got two Parivartana exchanges in operation. Um, I'm pretty sure if I've got this right, when we look at the chart of Taylor Swift, I know it's Parivartana exchange action and I think she's got two as well. It's that strong energy that's making her really, really famous and successful. Um, that was what I saw anyway when I looked at her chart. When we look at Kamala Harris's transits, again, we've got some strong stuff going on here. So Saturn alone is so powerful. Look at that. Saturn is, um, she's in a Saturn return. Okay. And so, but most importantly, she's got Saturn 11th from the moon. That can yield her a, a big uplift, a big new platform. Okay, so um, that's what I'm seeing for her astrologically. When I look at, when I compare her and Donald Trump, you know, can I say, now I did draw cards on both of these. What cards did I get? Okay, so this was quite interesting. Um, I only took one for each. And for Trump, I got the two of wands, which I quite liked. I got a calm energy there. And again, I got, well, I got a future focus. He's looking at what's next. Um, I quite liked it. The beginning of a new journey. It's that is strong. It's a good card to get. Kamala Harris was interesting. The tower card. Okay. That's a major arcana. And what it features is it features like a tower and the tower is exploding and like there's people falling out of it. So I don't know. I, I, I don't know how to read that. I mean, could you, could it be that she's exploding onto the scene or I don't know. I mean, or is there some upheaval or chaos on her side? I'm not entirely sure. Her chart is strong for a win. And what I would say is just based on the chart type of thing, um, her chart is strong for a win. Donald Trump's numerology is strong for a win. Okay, so that's what I'm seeing there. I wouldn't vote for either Donald Trump or Kamala Harris. Who I would vote for is Dr. Jill Stein. And I'm very happy to talk you through her chart. To those of you who are still here, look at that, we're five minutes in. Oh, I don't know if people are still here, but I'm really excited to talk about her chart. Um, and I'll just read you a little bit about who she is. Now, 
I've been hearing about her. I, I watch George Galloway's channel. I really enjoy tuning into him. He's mother of all talk shows. I think he's a very entertaining speaker. He's a very interesting man. He has an exalted Saturn. So, uh, you know, automatically there's somebody I want to watch. Uh, you know, I can just trust the information that's coming from him. Um, I watch him and he always talks about Dr. Jill Stein. And I must admit, I never bothered to, to check her out. And on the weekend, I was going to do some sewing and I thought, well, I want to have something on in the background. And I saw this thing and it was, it was by The Breakfast Club, which I have never watched in my life. It's got something like 5 million subscribers. Anyway, it, it had Jill Stein and all these young people and it looked like this radio studio. And I thought, this looks cool. Let's put it on, have it in the background. And I was doing my sewing and I'm listening to her and I'm just going, she's amazing how did i not how did i not follow this you know how did i not i should have pursued this before she's incredible I, I thought wow and what i was happy about there why would i vote for her okay i would vote for her because i feel like the vote would be like would carry a different energy so if i'm trying to vote for donald trump or kamala harris I'm really, it, it, it would be an agony for me, <laughs> like which one to choose. And I'm kind of trying to choose between which one's going to cause less damage or which one's going to be, you know, less difficult or something like that. Or which one is less of an agenda person or whatever. I, that's how I'd be looking. Now with Jill Stein, the vote, if I was to vote for her, it would be unconditioned. It would be not because of billionaire money putting ads on television i don't even watch television but like you know it, it, it the energy is good there it's like it's grassroots it's the real deal thing she's really listening to people she wants to deliver to real people um i'll read a little bit about her here so it says here jill ellen stein is an american physician and activist she is the green party's nominee for president of the united states in the 2024 election okay now obviously she's not going to win i know that but to me it's not a wasted vote at all because it's just energy in the right direction and it's building a much needed you guys need an option imagine if there was no jill stein Imagine if it would be depressing if there was no option. I think this is incredible that there is an option and it's a really good op option as well. Um, if we look here, we've got here in 1973, Stein graduated magna cum laude from Harvard College where she studied psychology, sociology and anthropology. She then attended Harvard Medical School and graduated in 1979. Stein practiced internal medicine blah 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 um let's have a look and then it talks about where was the bit the bit i wanted to say was yes during her time as a practicing physician she advocated for the improvement of air quality standards for coal plants and i thought wow that is amazing look at this she's been advocating for a better quality of living for people over a very long time and what's exciting about her her chart is really exciting okay so this is what i loved when i had a look at her chart now i'm not really able to comment on her birth chart particularly because i don't have her time but let's just step into okay so we've got jupiter here she's running jupiter venus okay and that jupiter venus is all around her rahu so if jupiter venus is going to deliver something for her this is going to be future focused and i get a feel a little bit similar what i said about rahul gandhi that like i said something about something of the future lies in his hands something of the future of, of america lies in her hands we've got this rahu energy here uh this jupiter venus is active as per the dasha okay so i find that exciting and then when we take a look at her transits look at this she's got similar very similar energy to kamala harris um she's got saturn 11th from the moon that's platform building saturn can give her a big 
boost a brand new platform or can really raise her profile massively. Saturn's also transiting over natal Jupiter here. So she's potentially due for massive expansion. Um, Jupiter is also fourth from natal Jupiter. This is a time of promotion. So she is going to be seen. I think she is going to profit the most um, out of this uh, election. I think she's going to do the best. She's not going to win. I, I'm not saying that. Don't worry. I haven't lost my mind here. I know she's not going to win, but she's going to do the best out of all of these people. And numerologically, she is running a nine year, which is powerful. Okay, so that's Mars energy, but she is going to enter a number one year next year. Now, here's what's quite interesting. When I drew a card for her, this was fascinating. I was a bit deflated because the first card that came was the devil. And I thought, oh no. And I kind of, ugh, I was like, I, I put it back in. <laughs> I thought, maybe I'll draw another card later. I thought, oh, maybe I just won't say anything. And maybe I'm not going to, you know, but no, I have to say something. Because then before I put all of this away and started looking at the mini readings, I thought, look, let me just let me just try again with Dr. Jill Stein. Let me just see. I'll shuffle again and see if one card comes. Again, I got the devil and I know what it is. She's going to do so well that corporate sponsors are going to want to court her. I think I think that's what that means. Uh, they're going to want to give her money and say, hey, look, wow, you did so well. You know, uh, we're going to yeah, and, and, and we can see where the people are, potentially. I mean, look, I don't know. This election is, oh, wow, there's a seagull there. That's interesting. It's very white. I wonder what that means. Hmm. Don't often see that sight. Sorry, and it, it just made this huge circle, and then it landed on this rooftop, and I'm like, hmm. I don't know what that means. Anyway, what I can tell you is I think she's going to do really well. And yeah, but equally, I mean, look, don't be influenced by anything I have to say. If you feel called to vote for either of the major parties, you do that. And some of you will feel called to not participate. Some of you will be deep in your meditation and, you know, you don't want to disturb that and you don't want to go into the world. We're all at different stages. You know, some of us are still engaged in the world. I know with my client base, um, I've got people who are, you know, very living very sacred lives and they're not participating in anything at all. Um, equally, I've got some of you who are working, you know, in the heart of corporate America and you're doing big jobs and you're doing amazing things and some of you will be voting and, just, you know, yeah, however it goes. Know that you, you follow your inner guidance but take all of this information, whatever I've shared, as just something interesting and just, you know, we can all learn a little something. And the thing about Dr. Jill Stein is that you're not going to hear about her on the television or on any of the mainstream channels. Uh, and that's actually why I like the energy of what's going on there. It's unconditioned by uh, the big corrupt stuff. There's some true wonderful things going on there and it very much resonates with Saturn in Aquarius energy so yeah you, you can you can have a look and, and see what she's about if if that speaks to you all right guys well I think what I'm going to do I've waffled on for so long this is going to be a massive video to edit my MacBook by the way I don't know if anyone is watching till now sometimes people tune out drop off by now but a couple of you have been so incredibly kind to suggest things for my MacBook Pro, um, I am going to look into getting a solid state drive. I think if I put the files on the solid state drive and I edit them on there, then that should be an improvement. So thank you to those of you so much who've given me technology guidance and advice. I appreciate all of that. I just want to see, is there anything I've missed here? No, I think I've covered everything. I even went into tarot as well. I even gave you the song. Look at that. I've given you everything. So yeah, look, I find all this stuff really interesting. And for me, I just wish 
the United States the best. And I think that all of this is much of a muchness. I think it doesn't matter really who gets into power. Um, these, we've got corrupt systems. They are going to change. You know, of course they're going to change. Uh, and uh, we're, we're going to, we're ready. We're ready to help make that happen in whatever way we need to. So, yeah, we're looking forward to change. We're holding the energy of change, aren't we? And we're ready for when that happens. All right, well, let's take a look at the mini reports. Any of you who are joining for the whole thing, let's go. All right, so Aries, Aries, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Aries Ascendant. Aries moon or Aries sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Jupiter is going to go retrograde. So that is from the 9th of October to the 5th of Feb in Taurus. And for you, that's going to happen in your second house. So we have a slower, more deliberate Jupiter here at this time and this Jupiter energy really does want to help you expand your savings, your wealth, your career, how you earn money, how you shine in the world. Okay, um, I've got here you are getting an opportunity to not only materialize wealth but also to improve things in your family life as well. Now on the 13th of October Venus moves into 8th house Scorpio this is great energy for your love life. And what you might have found is that love might have been a bit restricted uh, over the last couple of months. So say, for example, wow, since 24th August, I've got written here and it's 18th September when I'm recording this. So, yeah, I mean, if your love life has been just you know, you're feeling like you're not going anywhere with it or what's happening or, you know, uh, just know that there will be an uplift of energy in that area from the 13th of October onwards. Now from the 17th of October to the 15th of November, the sun moves through 7th house Libra. So for you, it's ideal that this time be a time of heightened empathy. Okay, and you've really got the chance and ability to see things from another person's point of view. So it's good for you to deliberately look from another person's point of view. This is going to sharpen your creativity. This is going to sharpen your business. So if you're running a business, for example, or you have clients, really try to step into their shoes and feel like what, what is it to receive my service kind of thing. And that could give you clues and ideas on how to improve what you do. Okay, so it's really good every now and then to just check in with what you're doing, check in from the other person's point of view and see if there are any modifications you need to make. Now, we've got a new moon eclipse on the 2nd of October. We've got a full moon eclipse on the 17th of October. I'm not going to cover those here. I normally cover the new moon and the full moon in these mini reports. But what I'll do is I'll say you can check that out in the special report above. Uh, I've done a breakout report just on that. So if you want to check that out, you can. Aries, thank you so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Taurus. Taurus, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. All right, so this is Taurus Ascendant, Taurus Moon, or Taurus Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So Jupiter retrogrades from the 9th of October to the 5th of Feb in Taurus. And for you, this is happening in your first house. So you are in focus here, okay? And it's time to review your dharma. It's time to review what you do in life. What are you all about? What are your goals? And what are your personal efforts towards making your goals a reality? This is really a time to examine what you're doing. Is it effective? Do you need to tweak what you do? Do you need to tweak the fire element? Okay, so when we're tweaking the fire element, we, we are tweaking our goals, you know, and sometimes it's about increasing our ambition. Sometimes it's about reducing our ambition. Sometimes we're too ambitious and we need to rein it in. So 
you might be looking to tweak those levels in your life. I've also got here, recognize that without you, there's something that will suffer in the world. So what is that thing? Okay, and that thing is also indicating things about your purpose and what it is you need to do and what you're here to do. And I've got here that you need to value your output first before anyone else does. So you've got to value your gifts, your strengths, your talents, what you have, what you're doing well. You need to value that and value that highly. And you'll see that other people will value that highly too. Now, Venus isn't in the best place for love life. Okay, and that's Venus transiting your sixth and seventh houses. Gosh, this is through to about 6 November. It's, it's a while. So if you're in a relationship and you're feeling like, you know, maybe, maybe you're wanting to put your focus there, I would say don't put your focus on love life uh, through to about 6 November. Just know that love life is kind of go, it's going to kind of go along status quo or as is through to about 6 November. There's not much movement there. But this is an excellent Venus that will help you love your work more. This is a work focused time for you. You will reap and do well if you focus your efforts and attention on your work. Now 17th October to 15th November, the sun moves through Libra in the sixth house. This is a winning transit for you. This is beautiful energy. So you will shine at work. You might book more clients. You can get ahead with this energy on your side. Maybe this could even be good physically. This could just energize you, make you a bit more active. Um, you know, there's, there's just this burst of, hey, I've got all this energy, you know, it could, it could manifest in that way. And as for the new moon and full moon this month, you guys know that I cover that at the end of these mini reports. Well, have a look at the link above. I have covered the new moon eclipse on the 2nd of October and the full moon eclipse 17th of October in more detail there. Taurus, thank you so much for tuning in. We are now going to welcome Gemini. Gemini, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Gemini Ascendant, Gemini Moon or Gemini Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So now Jupiter retrogrades from 9th October to 5th Feb 2025 in Taurus. And for you that's happening in your 12th house. Oh, I do like this one. Uh, this is an excellent time for you to grow spiritually. Okay, and I've got here, as the weather changes, take your favorite spiritual texts, a warming drink, and take some time out to ponder the big questions in life. I actually did this yesterday. Yes, it was yesterday morning. I woke up and I don't know, I didn't sleep so well. It wasn't an energizing kind of sleep. I woke up a bit tired and I thought, why don't I just go to the park, I'll take my book and I made, well, so I made a miso soup, but I put it in my cup with the lid, one of those travel cup things. And I took my notebook and I took it all to the park and I found just the most beautiful, quiet little spot. And yeah, and it wasn't too early in the morning. I think it was probably about 9 a.m. or something. But I just sat there for half an hour and I just loved it. It was so lovely. and. Gemini, if you want to have some of those mornings across this period, that will do you a lot of good. I've got here, by going slow, you will expand, which means just a little bit of effort later will take you further. I've been contemplating this idea quite a bit. And what I'm discovering is that if you go within, it's kind of like you grow your inner self. So when, if you're a bigger self, it's kind of like you have a bigger vehicle, if you know what I mean. And when you have a bigger vehicle, you just have to press the accelerator lightly and you go faster. It's that thing that you can develop at this time. It's internal work. No one will see that you're a bigger vehicle, but you will have done the work. I've got here, go slow across this time. It will reward you. OK, 
Okay, so if you're getting the vibe, I need to go slow, honor that. Very important, that's your Jupiter. Now Venus is well placed for love through to 12th October, but then after that, love life energy might flatline a little bit. Yeah, so you've got really nice energy for love. So say from now, I'm recording this on the 18th of September, so from now through to 12th October, love life is great. But then love life might flatline a bit or just not much happening in that area. And I've got here, but you will be loving your work from mid-October onwards. Yeah, for the rest of the month. And on the 17th of October to the 15th of November, the sun moves through Libra in your fifth house. So you might find expenses run a bit higher across this month. And you also might find this could this energy could be a little bit physically draining or tire, tiring or something like that. Uh, so if that's the case, just rest across that period. Now, normally at the end of one of these mini reports, I cover the new moon and the full moon. So this time we're going to have a new moon eclipse on the 2nd of October and we're going to have a full moon eclipse on the 17th of October. And you'll be able to watch that report up here. Gemini, thank you so much for tuning in. We are now going to welcome Cancer. Cancer, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. I'm checking the time. We're kind of okay. It will cut out. All right, Jupiter retrogrades from, wait, before we get into it, who are we welcoming? We are welcoming Cancer, Cancer Ascendant, Cancer Moon, or Cancer Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So we've got Jupiter retrograding from 9th October to 5th Feb in Taurus. Now for you, this is happening in your 11th house. Oh, this is so good, Cancer. Make the most of this. This is a great transit. So this is profitable energy. Jupiter is slower. Jupiter is more deliberate. And if you consciously work with the law of attraction, you can create more gains. You can create more wealth. You can create a bigger network, bigger social media platform, more success. You can materialize things across this period. So just bear that in mind. You've got some good energy uh, there in your 11th house. Now, Venus transits beautifully through your fourth and fifth houses across the month of October. This is wonderful. Enjoy time at home, cook up something delicious, enjoy being with your family, or enjoy some well-earned me time. Okay, so this is definitely a time to cozy up uh, and love being at home. Now, the first half of the month until 17th of October, the sun is in a winning energy this is third house Virgo. So you've got this beautiful winning sun. That could translate to being good physical energy as well. But here after that, so after 17th October, you might notice that house expenditures go up across the last half of the month. And normally in one of these videos, I cover the new moon and the full moon. This time I've covered the new moon eclipse on the 2nd of October and the full moon eclipse on the 17th of October in a special breakout video above in case you missed that. So Cancer, thank you so much for tuning in. We are now going to welcome Leo. Leo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Leo Ascendant, Leo Sun or Leo Moon as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So what have we got going on Leo? We have got a Jupiter retrograde from the 9th of October to the 5th of Feb. 2025. This is happening in Taurus and for you this is happening in your 10th house. So this is good energy to learn more about how to succeed in your career. You can expand your career here but you can also come up against limits with this energy as well. Um, yeah it's an interesting one. So how I would use this energy is to learn more about success, learn more about how to improve what you do. Your next Jupiter transit, your next Jupiter transit, which will be from May 2025 onwards for about a year, that is going to be the transit where you will cash in from all that you learn now. So 
when it comes to Jupiter, Jupiter is quite good in the 10th, but it's going to be even better for you and it's going to be profitable for you in from May 2025 onwards. I just want to check one thing. Yeah, absolutely, Jupiter. I'm just looking at, I've got this little diagram here and yeah, Jupiter is much better in the next transit. Okay, so currently I've got here, this is an energy to, to be humble, to do the work. You, know, you might be working really hard, but you're like, where are the results? You know, uh, I've got here, your time to profit is coming. You are preparing, you are getting ready. Okay, and this also does, I mean, when I look up your chart, for example, if I do a reading for you, then yeah, I'm looking at, okay, when, when are the profitable things, times coming, and I'm looking at natal planets, I'm looking at more. So here in a transit, general transit video, I can't, you know, say too much, because this could be a good time for you actually right now. But uh, in a very general sense, Jupiter will be more profitable for you from May 2025 onwards. Now Venus transits beautifully through your third and fourth houses. Oh, this is good, Leo. I've got here, enjoy time out, enjoy short little trips here and there, get away from your desk. Don't be so desk bound. Life is not only about working, life is about having fun. So I've got here, socialize with friends, have cozy nights in. This is from a Venus perspective, beautiful, loving energy all around. Now from 17th October onwards, the sun will be beautifully placed in third house Libra to deliver success. Okay, you do have a burst of success that will come from the sun there and that'll last about a good month. Uh, so you've got that lovely energy there. I've got here, you can grow your social media, you can land new opportunities, you can get work, you can make new friends, or you can just generally shine. You know, even physically that, that could be quite nice as well. Now normally in a mini report like this I cover the new moon and the full moon. So we have got a new moon eclipse on the 2nd of October, we've got a full moon eclipse on the 17th of October and I've covered that in full in the link above. You'll be able to watch that there. Leo, thank you so much for tuning in. We are now going to welcome Virgo. Virgo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Virgo Ascendant, Virgo Moon or Virgo Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So we have got Jupiter retrograding from the 9th of October to the 5th of Feb 2025 in Taurus. And for you, that's happening in your ninth house. So you can really power up during this retrograde period. I've got here, look to up your leadership, up your responsibility, up your authority. This is, this is a time to go up. Okay, so I've got here, if something isn't working on the level that you're on, try to go up. Be ambitious. Okay, and I've got here, yeah, don't go looking backwards for security. You've done that level. It's time now to go up. So I've got here, go forward, take risks, try something new. Try something new. Um, Venus transits beautifully through your second and third houses. This is wonderful energy. I've got here, you could treat yourself to some new purchase if you would like. So that's through to the 12th of October. Uh, you could enjoy time with family. Great time for socializing, you know, time at home, home cooking, all that good lovely homey stuff. Uh, making new friends, meeting friends, just yeah, just enjoy this lovely Venus energy here. And the first half of the month, the sun could be physically draining. Okay, so that's sun in first house Virgo. Yeah, that first half of October, if you find that you're getting more tired than usual, don't be worried. It's not you, it could just be that the sun is passing, passing through Virgo. Um, 17th onwards, 17th of October onwards, the sun might be financially draining. So you might find that your expenses run a bit higher. That sun moving through second house Libra. Now I've got here, take care regarding headaches or ascension symptoms. There is this thing of ascension sy symptoms. The vibrations here on earth, they are changing. We are improving. 
you know the, the vibrations are lifting and shifting we're improving and that can mean physical symptoms as well so headaches and things like that could just be um, a sign that you are you know you're you're physically transforming across this time um, so just watch out for that you could google ascension symptoms and learn a little bit more about that it's, it's a really fascinating area of discovery and the new moon and full moon what have I got to say here well normally with one of these reports I cover the new moon and the full moon but this time we have a new moon eclipse on the 2nd of October we have a full moon eclipse on the 17th of October and I have covered that in a special report here so you can check that out in more detail Virgo I want to thank you so much for joining we are now going to welcome Libra Libra welcome thank you so much for joining so this is Libra ascendant Libra moon or Libra sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology so now Jupiter retrogrades from the 9th of October to the 5th of Feb 2025 in Taurus and for you this is happening in your eighth house this is beautiful energy this is a slow and deliberate energy that you can use to grow your spiritual side Okay, and I've got here don't rush with this energy this is a time where you can learn more about spirituality you can learn about that occult side of you you can grow that occult side of you you can learn more about what is it to be psychic or have intuition or you know um, connect with that other side this is the time where you can learn a lot about all that kind of thing I've got here you can really take time to grow internally and I've got here if you do this successfully you will expand your internal world and then when it comes time for you to perform in the world you'll kind of because you're bigger inside you'll perform more easily you know it's kind of like a you develop a big vehicle inside kind of thing and then when you hit the accelerator it goes further faster if you know what I mean so that's the analogy I'm using for this whole Jupiter in a moksha area right um, yeah lucky you Libra you get to do this high refined spiritual work across this period now Venus transits beautifully through your first and second houses this is an excellent time for self-care okay look after your physical body exercise dance tap out the tension I recently watched this really cool video so I'm going to put it in the links below because a friend of mine sent this to me and I thought this video was so good I had a headache starting this was like yesterday afternoon and I got that tapping video out and I started doing the tapping just like everywhere seriously headache gone I tapped the energy out it was fantastic so I'm going to I'm going to give you this tapping video right here link Libra I'll put it in the comments below so where it says more click more and then there'll be all these information and links and I'll put the link in there um, tapping video I really liked that video I thought it was good <laughs> Uh, what have we got here yeah tap out the tension got here update your diet try some new recipes eat more fresh veggies and nuts and berries I'll give you a new recipe idea recently I was watching a tarot card reader that I really like and she talked about red lentil wraps and I'm thinking and she said so she's Jamaican and she said this thing about I'm not going to gentrify it she's like it's a red lentil dosa and I was like oh how cool she knows about dosas and yeah so anyway um, I've Google searched the recipe I've made them they're really nice so yeah it's a great recipe and it's not hard to make um, I, I, I would make it again I actually want to try it as a pizza base you can make a red lentil pizza base I'm going to try that so yeah that was a new recipe I tried recently I really enjoyed it uh, what else have we got here first half of the month look at that we're looking at the Sun Sun transits 12th house Virgo for you and in the first house fir first half of October it might be a little bit harder than usual to sleep 
If you have some sleepless nights, restless nights, it's okay. It's just that the sun's passing through that area. Sometimes when I've read for clients who've got sun in the 12th house, they really do just generally find they don't need as much sleep as other people and that's just normal for them. That's fine. So yeah, I think with sleep, we've just got to go with it. You know, like um, I know they say, oh, you have to get this much and all that, but Yogananda says, I mean, I'm reading his book and he says, look, you don't need much sleep at all if you meditate a lot. So yeah, I am uh, yet to up my meditation to that degree. I would like to. Sometimes I do, if I'm up at like three, I'll do like a 20 minute. Sometimes I've done like 40 minutes uh, that early in the morning. Yeah, it's quite nice. Oh, and we've got eclipses as well. Yeah, that might be hard to sleep. I'm actually, it's, yeah, 18th. A couple of days ago, I was finding it really hard to sleep. So, yeah. So, yeah, if you find it hard to sleep first half of this month, you know why. Through to about like, say, for example, 17th October. I've got his 17th of October onwards, your sleep will improve. But again, this, this transit could just be a little bit tiring. Uh, sun will transit through first house Libra. So just rest, okay? If you're feeling tired, if you're feeling run down, go home early or rest or don't do as much. Um, make sure you prioritize your physical health, okay? Because winter is coming here in the Northern Hemisphere. You know, you don't want to tire yourself out too much. We conserve some energy. Now, normally I talk about the new moon and the full moon, but I've covered that in a video. So we've got new moon eclipse, 2nd October. We've got a full moon eclipse, 17th October. You can find out more about that in the video linked above. All right, Libra, well, thank you so much for tuning in. We are now going to welcome Scorpio. Scorpio, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. What have we got going on, Scorpio? Well, we are welcoming, who are we welcoming? Scorpio Ascendant, Scorpio Moon or Scorpio Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. We've got Jupiter retrograding from 9th October to 5th Feb 2025 in Taurus. Now for you, this is happening in the seventh house. This is really excellent energy, okay? You can grow your social media platforms. You can grow your business if you're self-employed. You can grow your friend circles. You could meet someone special. Um, you could be expanding your heart. You could be, you know, there's a lot of things could happen uh, with this Jupiter retrograde here. And I've got here, if something isn't working at a particular level, take a risk and try the next level up. Okay, so don't, don't go backwards. Sometimes we go backwards because we want security. But if that's being denied, that's a good thing. It means there's something up here, it means there's something better. Okay, so sometimes when we don't get a job, for example, where we're definitely more than qualified and, oh, I could totally do that and, uh, you know, I'm more than qualified and you know, that means you're, you're going for something secure and you're taking a step backwards. You need to apply for something where you're going out of your comfort zone. You need to grow. Okay, it's time to grow. So I've got here, yeah, it's time to expand your profile and what you do. It's time for growth, Scorpio. Extend yourself a little bit. And I've got here, in the first half of the month, Venus in the 12th house might talk you into some escapism or some procrastination. Now, if that feels like the right move, do that, enjoy that, obviously. Uh, sometimes we need a bit of escapism and sometimes we need some procrastination because I have heard that ideas come to a well-rested mind. So enjoy a bit of guilt-free procrastination the first half of the month. I've got here after the 13th of October, it will suit you to become disciplined with your health and your self-care. Okay. Venus is going to enter Scorpio and Scorpio is going to be receiving that Saturn aspect. 10th aspect. So you're going to want to become disciplined about your physical body, your health routines, self-care, all of that. Uh, yeah. I'm just seeing, is it, are you still able to procrastinate? Maybe not. <laughs> I don't know. I leave that to you. Uh, now the first half of the month, the sun has winning energy. So that's sun in 11th house, Virgo, 
beautiful so October's opening with that gorgeous sun energy where you know it's a winning energy you can you can grow you can profit you can be seen you can be socializing you can be seen and understood and recognized with that energy now the 17th of October onwards the sun might be a bit tiring actually or it might be harder to sleep on some nights so that sun passing through 12th house Libra you might find that it's just a little bit harder to sleep on those nights and if that's the case that's all right you know maybe that gives you an opportunity to do some meditation or read a beautiful spiritual book that you love that's what I do when I find it hard to sleep now normally in these reports I cover the new moon and the full moon this time we've got a new moon eclipse on the 2nd of October we have a full moon eclipse on the 17th of October and you'll find out everything I have to say about those in the video linked above Scorpio Thank you so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Sagittarius. Sagittarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Sagittarius Ascendant, Sagittarius Moon or Sagittarius Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So Jupiter retrogrades from the 9th of October to the 5th of Feb 2025 in Taurus. Now for you this is happening in your sixth house. So you really can use this stronger Jupiter energy to improve your wealth or to improve your savings across this time but it might be hard to do so um, it depends on how yeah this how this energy has been working for you and and the build of your sixth house there would be things that I'd want to see uh, so I really can't assess this too precisely for you um, I've got here you might need to learn how to solve problems or blockages first before you see success it could be Sagittarius that you're trying to expand but then oh you're coming up against a blockage or you know there's some issue or there's some challenge we're in the sixth house here sixth house is full of chaos Jupiter doesn't do so well here so don't worry because you're only going to be dealing with this until say for example May 2025 May 2025 onwards for about a whole year you're going to enter into a much better much much better energy so use this time to discover the blockage you know and that's actually what um, Lester Levinson teaches us he says that you know because sometimes you do lots of spiritual work and you think oh well, what's the point of like doing a career or earning money or yeah, what's the point of doing anything you know when you do lots of philosophizing and spiritual work you can be like oh what's the point or why should I should I not bother with the world anymore he says no go out and, and try and have goals and try to be a success and he says because in that process of you trying to be a success you will discover all the blocks that are in the way and that is your real work in the world to f meet the blockage and go oh I've got a blockage here I have to clear that so that's actually the real work that we do in our life we come up against a blockage and we clear we heal we grow we move through that's the real spiritual work and that's the real work of our lives so you're in this phase of doing the real work keep doing it uh, and if there are blockages or things like that that are becoming clear to you welcome them say oh good okay good I can clear that and now things can move more easily afterwards you are going to have a very good Jupiter transit May 2025 20, onwards no problem about that so if, in order for that to go very well wouldn't it be nice to to do some clearing work now um, I've got here in the first half of the month Venus in the 11th is great energy for socializing and for fun this is beautiful uh, it's great for money it's great for opportunities it's great for success so tune into Venus when you want to have a good time and I've got here after the 13th of October you might feel like escaping from it all and I've got here that energy goes until the 6th of November so it's an interesting one because Saturn aspect will be on that Venus in Scorpio so it might be hard to escape but you might feel like you really want to okay but equally Saturn might help you materialize a bit of an escape maybe you can I don't know 
disappear for an afternoon or or um yeah find a find a book that you really want to read and take a bit of time out or whatever it is now the first half of the month of october the sun has you shining at work that sun in 10th house virgo that is beautiful energy 17th of october onwards the sun has the power to bring in rewards results recognition for all your hard work lately so that sun in 11th house libra that's really beautiful energy so even even though you've got this big jupiter transit that is identifying the blockages and all that kind of thing you've still got lovely things you've got lovely short bursts and short-term energies coming in here you've got that lovely venus energy and you've got this lovely sun energy you know that wants to deliver some results to you so there are some some really nice things coming in here for you sagittarius now normally in these mini reports i cover the new moon and the full moon this time though we have a new moon eclipse on the 2nd of october we have a full moon eclipse on the 17th of october and you can find out more about that in the link above Sagittarius, thank you so much for tuning in. We are now going to welcome Capricorn. Capricorn, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Capricorn Ascendant, Capricorn Moon or Capricorn Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So Jupiter is going to retrograde from the 9th of October to the 5th of Feb 2025 in Taurus. And for you, this is happening in your fifth house. So it's time to aim higher okay and i've got here if things aren't working at the level that you are on reach for the next level up and i've got here take some calculated risks up your leadership your personal responsibility your authority in life it's like reach up try and do more be a little bit more ambitious see how it goes i've got here you can do it now okay there's some good energy here see what comes now if you're trying that and you're coming up against a blockage it's okay part of spiritual work is to have a goal lester levinson explains i was just saying this in an, another sign but you know lester levinson says you must have a goal in the world because your pursuit of that goal will bring up any blockages that are in the way and when we identify and clear the blockages that's actually the real work of our lives and I do I do believe in that so yeah it's okay if a blockage comes up take that on take that as part of the journey but there's this real you can do it now energy okay you can go for it you can extend yourself try I've got here in the first half of the month Venus is in your 10th house so love life is not in the best shape um, but you've got that venus energy in the 10th house which means you're loving your work you can put your heart into your work and you'll enjoy your work i've got here after 13th october your love life improves um, and you can also meet new people if that's something you are ready to do now on the 17th of october onwards the sun becomes empowered especially at work so this is sun in 10th house libra oh this is beautiful and then through to mid-December, the sun is brilliant and can deliver rewards and results. Look at that Capricorn from 17th October onwards, basically through to the middle of December. That's almost through to the end of the year. You can really shine and achieve and prosper across this period of time. So definitely don't write off the rest of this year i think you've got a lot of really good experiences um, and and wonderful things to look forward to here obviously if you're feeling tired if you need to rest take a bit of time out don't push it don't overwork now normally in these reports i cover the new moon and the full moon this time we've got a new moon eclipse on the 2nd of october and we've got a full moon eclipse on the 17th of october i've covered those in a special breakout report uh, in the link above which you can click on and take a look at capricorn thank you so much for joining we are now going to welcome aquarius aquarius welcome thank you so much for joining so this is aquarius ascendant aquarius moon or aquarius sun as per the sidereal vedic system of astrology so jupiter retrogrades from the 9th of october to the 5th of feb 2025 
in Taurus. For you, this is happening in your fourth house. Oh, I love this Aquarius. This is a slow, deliberate energy. And you can use this to grow spiritually. I've got here, take time out with your favorite spiritual books, read, learn, grow. And I've got here, if you grow internally, when it comes time to act in the outside world, you will do so quickly and efficiently. And I've got here, take this time to grow now. In the other signs where I've talked about this, there are a couple of other signs where I've mentioned this. I've talked about how when you go within, what you're doing is you're going to expand. It's almost like you're expanding the vehicle of your life so that then when you do go into the outside world, it's like you press the accelerator just a little bit and because you're operating a bigger vehicle, it's like you'll go further, faster, quicker. Okay, it's worth taking the time to do the internal work. And I know it's kind of not glamorous and no one sees it. And, you know, you're doing all this internal work and people just treat you like, you know, oh, well, you're still poor or whatever. You know, it's like... Believe me, I know this whole story. This is the story of my life, but it's like, <laughs> but it's worth doing the internal work for your own self. You're not doing it for anyone else anyway. You're not doing it for recognition or rewards because when you do the internal work and you feel good and you're happy for no reason at all, you're the winner, right? It doesn't matter what people, let people think what they think. Let them think whatever they want. It doesn't matter. You're happy. That's all that matters. Do that. Do the internal work that is going to make you happy. Okay. Because that's the only place where happiness is. It's not out there in the world. Believe me, I've tried to find it. It ain't out there. <laughs> anyway, let's have a look at Venus. Now I've got here in the first half of the month, Venus is in your ninth house. So this is excellent energy for learning and study. Look at that Aquarius. You can indulge in study, uh, studying your favorite spiritual authors. I've got here after the 13th of October, Venus is loving work. So, you know, work is going to go great for you. But what about your love life? What if you're in a relationship and, you know, you're kind of feeling like, the energy is a bit flat or, or whatever. Well, what I will tell you is that from 13th October through to about 6th November, your love life might be a bit flat. Okay, don't expect too much from love life there. 6th of November onwards, love life energy picks up. Things improve. Uh, and if you're single, you could meet someone, you know, 6th November onwards. Now, the first half of the month, Sun in 8th house Virgo is lighting up occult secrets or agendas of others. You will see more, you will understand more about the world, you'll be given insights into things. And then the 17th of October onwards, you've got Sun in ninth house Libra. That could actually bring up some conflicts with authority, so you might want to take care at that time and just be prepared, just know that there could be some conflicts with authority, 17th October onwards. Now, normally in these reports, I cover the new moon, well, the new moon or the full moon, but we have got a new moon eclipse on the 2nd of October, and we've got a full moon eclipse on the 17th of October. I've done a full breakout report in the link above, so you'll be able to take a look at that there. Aquarius, thank you so much for tuning in. We are now going to welcome Pisces. Pisces, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Camera's going to cut out, but it's okay. We're going to keep going. Pisces, what have we got going on? Well, we are welcoming Pisces Ascendant, Pisces Moon, or Pisces Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. What have we got going on? Well, we have got Jupiter retrograding from the 9th of October through to the 5th of Feb 2025 in Taurus. And for you, this is happening in your third house. So I've got here, it's, it's going to take some self-effort. It's going to take some self-effort or some courage to activate this Jupiter. And I've got here, but if you do, you can grow your work in the world. You can grow your social media platforms. 
you can grow your circle of friends I've got here if you need publicity for something that you're doing you're being given another chance okay you're being given another chance because Jupiter of course is covering ground that Jupiter has already covered so there's also this sort of second chance energy here if there's something you want to correct if there's something that you want another shot at you've also got that kind of energy here with Jupiter but as I say it will take self-effort or courage to activate this energy now in the first half of the month we've got Venus in your eighth house so this is great energy for love life great energy for time with your extended family and from the 13th of October onwards you've got Venus in your ninth house so this is great energy for travel uh, great energy for finding love great energy for learning something new finding a new guru finding a new book a new teacher that you're really excited about and then the first half of the month we've got sun in virgo in the seventh house this is really helping you see things from another person's point of view this is heightened empathy this is heightened understanding and with that information you can produce a better outcome you can produce a better project or artwork or business or whatever it is that you're engaged in and doing you can do it better because you can see things from the other person's point of view it's a real superpower empathy it's it's very un, un, underrated in the world but it's becoming more and more uh, appreciated all the time which is good the world is changing the world is changing and the world is changing to recognize more you know yeah to, to recognize the spiritual quiet empathetic ones more it is changing I've got here from the 17th of October onwards the Sun is in the eighth house Sun in eighth house Libra could illuminate hidden agendas of those around you you could really gain some insights about some of the undercurrents uh, things that are shifting and moving under the radar or you know the things people don't speak about but you know you know what's going on Pisces you know it you feel it you see it now normally in these videos I talk about the new moon and the full moon but I've already covered that we've got a new moon eclipse on the 2nd of October and we've got a full moon eclipse on the 17th of October and you will be able to find out more about that in the breakout report that I've already done in the link above Pisces and anyone who's watched the whole video I want to thank you so much for being here thank you so much for being the most wonderful audience out there I just feel so lucky to do this channel I really love doing it and you know what I, I miss putting out I used to be more regular with content I used to put out more content here but I'm on Patreon and that's why I'm putting up all the stuff there so you know, once I've created quite a good bank of stuff on the Patreon I will come back and do more content here on YouTube I will but I have got a video coming up here on the YouTube um, it's going to be something I'll give you a little preview Pisces uh, and anyone else who's still here uh, it's going to be um, I think we're looking at courage and creativity I'm very excited to do that it's going to be a sit down draw think explore you know see what comes on the fly I love all that stuff so we're going to do that maybe maybe next week if I'm lucky let's see but um, I want to thank you so much for being here and I look forward to seeing you next time mm -hmm.